welcome back to Cap at Home in Gold Detroit. I'm Miss Van and today we are going to make a Pier at Sunset watercolor painting. Now before we get too into the video, I'm just going to say some things. Um, I want to say thank you so much for joining me and giving me the opportunity to uh, Say thank you to our sponsors, Community Education Commission of the City of Detroit and General Motors who allow us to keep these art tutorials free of charge. Uh, now, let's see what supplies we need. So I have here a piece of mixed media paper and I already have it taped to my work surface, but you can use any type of um, cardstock or paper that you happen to have. I have a few brushes for my watercolor painting. I have a set of watercolor paints and I've got a pen, a pencil, a yellow crayon here, and then for cleanup uh, I have this dish of water and some paper towel. Um, if you end up getting any watercolor paint on a surface that you, you know, where you don't want it, um, it's helpful just to have some warm soapy water on hand. Um, but if it's just a little bit, you can probably just dab it with the paper towel. And I also like to use the paper towel to blot my brush in between colors. So let's get started. I'm going to use my wider brush here just to sort of get the paper damp. Ooh. Before I get too far, I actually wanted to do my yellow sun. So this is a landscape painting and it's also a, a one point perspective so that means we have a vanishing point which is roughly um, kind of in the top third of the painting here and the vanishing point in this picture is the sun which uh, I'm going to paint setting so the first step is uh, after you kind of establish your vanishing point to uh, moisten the paper and now I'm going to add some color to get the background of the sunset I want to make a gradient so I'm going to add darker blue on the top and bottom and a medium blue in the middle and in order to add some depth, you can also use a few different colors. I'm going to mix it in so this turquoise and some purple. But I want to keep the top and bottom both a darker shade of blue. It just helps to establish the perspective. All right. So next, I'm going to add the tree line. So I'm going to use this um, medium sized brush, this middle brush. And I'm going to get this pine green. And I'm going to slightly angle my tree line so it draws your eye in to the focal point. And I'm going to add some brown to make it look nice and earthy. So what I like, one of the things I really like about watercolor um, is that when you use 
which we'll get to the pencil part in just a minute. Um, you don't really need an eraser. Um, you can use it if you want to, but since you're working wet with watercolor, um, you would want to wait until after the fact, and um, it's just better to kind of let the pencil be part of the drawing, and it's going to get kind of taken away by the water anyway, and it's just going to add like another layer to your painting. Like, watercolor just is lots of layers of kind of this, um, it's more of a tint really than a paint. <laughs> All right, so I've got my tree line. Uh, now is where the perspective part comes into uh, the drawing. It's a little bit more technical. So to make the pier, you want kind of like a trapezoid, because again, you're you're drawing your eye into the focal point, the vanishing point of this landscape. And then I'm just going to kind of add the boards of the pier here. And they start a little bit narrower towards the middle and they get wider. And I'm going to add some support beams just to give it that little bit of extra perspective. And again, I'm trying to keep the vanishing point in mind so the um, angles are going to kind of converge in this way. All right. So now that I have that, I'm going to add the color. I'm going to add some dark and medium browns. Oops, I forgot some of the perspective here. Okay. So this is kind of a medium brown. Okay. So also at this point, after I get my first layer of brown here for the wood grain, I'm going to come in and add more depth to kind of the sunset aspect of the painting. So I'm just adding these layers in. And, you know, again, the pencil is going to get sort of fine-tuned with the pen. I'm going to add some detail. But for right now, this just gives me a bit of, like, background layer. Sort of a foundation, if you will. And this is all going to be part of the wood grain. All right, so I'm going to keep using this middle size brush. And I'm going to blot out the color. All right, so I'm going to add the sunset colors. So I've got this sort of purple violet color. I'm going to add some orange. I'm going to add some red, and I'm also going to add it to the reflection of the water. Now, I've kind of lost some of my water as it dries, so I'm going to add the water back in. I really like how watercolor kind of like melts in from one color to the next, kind of runs and bleeds. It's a really fun texture, but that's also why you want to tape it down because this wrinkling that happens when it's wet, when the page is wet, will start to go away as it dries. So if you have it taped down, it will actually kind of pull itself back taut again, which 
is nice because then it'll be a flatter page still. All right. So I like the swirling that's happening right here. That's just like a fun attribute of working with watercolor. So I've got kind of a lot of water on the page. I'm going to try and avoid adding more. So this is going to be, yeah, more of a dry brush. So this color is going to come in like really bold when you use a dry brush. So I'm really getting a good variety of color here. It's starting to look like a sunset. All right. So this is starting to be a little bit dry. I really love using this type of pen uh, with watercolor painting because you get, it's like the ink kind of mixes well with the water and it makes again this like really interesting texture where it's you're basically just painting with this teeny tiny little brush but it's actually a pen get these really cool lines and I'm going to add some wood grain detail and you can really see the separation between the boards here when you darken it in with your pen And get this fine detail. And I like to make these swirl patterns to just really Remind myself of what wood grain looks like and it's whenever you're doing any kind of artwork It's just these little details that really make it your own Okay, so now I'm going to add the branches of I like to imagine that it's an apple blossom tree because we're in Michigan and we have those. It's our state, our state flower. And we've got like the kind of, I like to imagine that this is pine trees in the distance. So apple blossoms, go. So I've got the pencil again. And I'm just making the branches. And again, it's converging inward toward the vanishing point. I just like to imagine that the branches are reaching because they do that, you know, reaching towards the light source. All right, now I'm going to add some more brown color to be my branches. And 
it's just reaching towards the sun. And you can really feel the warmth and the energy in this painting. That's why I really like this image. You can feel the wood grain of the pier beneath your feet. I love winter, but about this time, I start looking forward to the spring every year. And this is just a nice kind of meditation on looking forward to the future. All right. Now I'm going to add some flowers, some flower petals. There's a magnolia tree down the street from my house and it's already got blossoms, like just little buds. And I'm thinking about that. Every day when I walk by, they still look like they're holding on. We had some really good sun this week. So I was really anticipating doing this painting, thinking about how bright and sunny it's been. And I'm just using the tip of my brush here to make these little dots for the flower petals. And I'm imagining that there's some kind of floating in the water and some on the pier here. All right, so that is my pier at sunset watercolor painting. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, remember to post your reflections and questions in the comment section. We absolutely love to hear from you. Uh, you can post pictures of you working on a project and pictures of your completed project in the comments, or you can email them to cap at collegeforcreativestudies.edu for the opportunity to be featured in our social media page. Also, don't forget to come back at 4 p.m. next week, Monday through Thursday, for more Cap at Home and Gold Detroit art projects. If you miss us live on Facebook, don't worry. Our videos are available on our video library on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, so we can do art together anytime. Uh, thanks again for joining me and the Community Education Commission and General Motors. Uh, we'll see you next week.